This is Tim Ewart Coleman in Soweto for the for the Urban Circle website. Uh, it's uh, 24th of August 2008. Um, I'm in Soweto this morning, having stayed at a guest house here called Waldo's. Um, interesting uh, expression of wanting to be on top billing very desperately but not quite knowing how to get it right but very uh, authentically township I suppose and in a in a very new and contemporary 2008 way standing on the third floor looking out over this roofscape parapets and uh, uh, columns and arcades and staircases glass aluminium it's really all all quite interesting uh, and uh, irrational and I suppose that's defined perhaps of what was ever expected out of the development of the townships and Soweto being the kind of the, uh, the township of all townships you know, uh, and all townships in South Africa are this urban phenomenon that we've got to deal with in some way um, but it's a phenomenon that's made up out of other things. People focus on the townships as being, well, this phenomenon that's created out of the desire to create uh, racially segregated neighborhoods. But the other real phenomenon is that it's uh, just this continuous urban sprawl. It's uh, um, illegible, irrational, hard to find your way around. Everybody here drives around with a map book or a GPS. No one can find anything. But the other part of what's important to know is that these townships, uh, Soweto and all other townships in South Africa, are a planning mistake or a design error or a, or a problem that comes out of apartheid thinking. But um, this is not a painting where you can paint over it with white paint and start again. Uh, this is not a sculpture where you can uh, pound the clay back into a lump and then start molding it again. It's a city. And the nature of cities is that once you once you set them out, um, the the pattern that you created in setting the city out is going to stay there for the next uh, ten years, twenty years, hundred years, thousand years. How how old is the the the, the fundamental layout of, of of Rome or London? Um, it really stays like that. So we're going to experience here for many many years to come a Soweto that resembles this street pattern. Um, this earth pattern uh, with with allowances for subdivisions and uh, consolidations and bigger sites. So let's focus on what is good and what is bad here. Yeah. What is bad is all the things that's bad about sprawling cities. But what's good is that we have in Soweto and other townships we have a, a potential for uh, a real pedestrianized, pedestrian orientated, human scale sort of place where you can walk from A to B. We have sufficient densities, uh, high enough densities, to be able to support public transport, which is not true for many other sprawling cities, uh, uh, sprawling parts um, of, of the city, where the densities are so low that it's basically the lowest common denominator is a man and his uh, car. Here yeah, the lowest common denominator can still be a man on foot walking far enough to get to public transport. So my my thinking with townships is you we, we have to our our task would be to look at what can be done yet to increase densities even more, create some form of nodes and some place, some identity, um, so that we we break away from the idea of monotonous, continuous, low rise sprawl. And thirdly to emphasize public transport orientated around those nodes and the development of green spaces around those nodes. Um, this is what we, we've got to do and this is what we've got to discuss and debate among ourselves about how we actually get this right in our cities. Um, we don't allow our cities and our townships to be the, their development to be governed by engineering requirements about getting the sewers to work and making sure there's adequate lighting to keep the criminals out. This is our work as architects. This is what we've got to do. Um, if we don't speak about it, nobody else is going to take the lead.